Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to hell. Uh, that is basically where we are. The, the world of tanks incarnation of what Wargaming imagine hell is this, is offensive assault on Sand River. Now, this is not a tank review, nor is it a gameplay review. We are going to be considering the concept of assault, the objective of this video is, by the end of it, hopefully, you will have a better understanding of how the assault game mode works in World of Tanks and your objective in assault, because it, it is really, really easy to forget how that in objective of capture the enemy base or kill the enemy vehicles, how that objective both empowers you in the defensive side and punishes you when you're attacking. And so we'll be discussing that in great detail, not going into a lot of detail about the tank or the specific map that we're on. So, as you saw me saying in chat there, the this game mode is more or less impossible to win on this side. Now, I've done a review or a gameplay analysis more specifically detailing um, why it's so hard to win on Sand River Assault, that was from a defensive perspective in my IS-4, if I remember, I'll put you a link down below so you guys can check it out if you want to know why this particular map is so difficult to win. However, at the start of the game, uh, optimism not being my strong suit, I say this is impossible to win, and I tell the scent, let's stick together, because I notice that he's a good player, and I'm thinking at the start of this game, the only thing that will really win it for us is a swift maneuver. The thing about Sand River specifically is that you lose a lot doing things slowly. Whether you're going around here or going around there or going over the middle, you have to do it quickly. It's one of the key elements of this map. So I go off to the north line in the hope that we can push and instantly I give up. Because my sense not there, the E50 is playing aggressively, he will just spot and fall back, we'll get shot from the middle, we will die. The E5 and the mouse have been spotted. Let us discuss assault. What is assault as a concept, as a game mode? It's not a food seasoning that adds extra flavour. It means that you have to either attack offensive assault or you have to defend defensive assault. So you have 10 minutes to do that. Now, defensive assault. Let's imagine that we are defending on a particular map. You have power over the enemy. Actually, you know what? I will consider the offensive game first. Okay. On defensive assault, you gonna need to cons on offensive. Sorry, offensive assault. You gonna need to consider your tank where it is the most effective, because 10 minutes is not a lot of time. 10 minutes is not a lot of time, you will waste probably at least 10% of the time that you have to win the game by killing all of the enemy tanks, or capping, you will waste that time by relocating. So you've got 9 minutes, you've got 9 minutes to win this game. So, at the start of every assault game mode, look at your tank. What is it? Does it have good gun definition, in which case you can play a more slow paced game, giving supporting fire at a range line before you push, where the enemy down. If not, if you have bad gun depression, then you probably want to make a swift and aggressive manoeuvre instantly into a position where you can be effective. The key in assault game modes is to get into a position where you feel you are effective as soon as possible. Don't wait around, don't worry about losing a bit of health to do it if you have to, but get into a position where you feel like you can make the biggest impact in the game because that is harder to do the longer and longer it goes on. Assault, from the offensive point of view, it shouldn't be like just jamming something into a can opener, to try, in, into a jar to try and get the lid to pop off. It should be played more carefully. And you see what I'm doing here? I've decided that, no. There's just no way we win the 9 0 line. That is not going to happen, but because I know the mouse, and the E5 are spotted over there. I know they're highly unlikely to have a lot of forces out where that Leo PTA is. So, I am using this time, I'm investing this time to relocate over here because I think the enemy have a weaker force over here. And that's basically what you've got to do with the, with the offensive assault. It's not 
machine kill everything, it's look at the map, where are they weak, how is this enemy defence going to crumble, do they have a lack of TDs here, do they have a weak flag here, and you've got to think about wh where that break is going to be made, and for me in this game, I considered it was to be over here, so I'm telling my team that I will go first, we need to attack this flank, we need to kill them, and I also tell them do not stop at this corner here because they'll get shot from the middle. Now, what I mainly want to cover is defensive assault because defensive assault, I see so many people playing it badly. And by playing it badly, I don't mean YOLOing out in front of enemy tanks. I don't mean bouncing their shells. I mean playing it from a tactical standpoint badly and the thing about defensive assault let's say that this game's just started i'm defending i'm in my tank it's just a tank i don't know what it is could be anything anything you like works for this analogy you come down into the middle position or any position doesn't particularly matter you get up here and what i will see so many people doing is poking constantly trying to shoot and they will lose health doing that. In the first three, four minutes of the game, they will lose health from this position unnecessarily. Now, I'll say this, and take it with a grain of salt, because occasionally it's not going to be the case, but for the most part in the assault game mode, your advantage is your health, and you should endeavour to keep your hit points on defensive assault for as long as possible. Your hit points when you're defending are more valuable at the start of the game than they are at the end. Unlike in any other game mode in World of Tanks, in any other game mode, you want that big glut of hit points at the start, at the end of the game, because it allows you to do loads of stuff. It allows you to go and attack the enemy. Well, not so much the case on Assault, because the enemy have to attack you. You know that at some point, even if you have to wait 5-6 minutes, the enemy are going to feel the pressure, and they are going to attack you. And at that point, it is far better to be on full health than it is on low health. And that's why it's so not worth losing health unnecessarily at the start of the game, during the first 24 minutes of a defensive assault. You should look at keeping all your hit points, playing defensively, waiting for the enemy's assault, trying to pinpoint where they are going to breach, and keeping your help, because from the enemy's standpoint, it's so difficult. It's so difficult. Defensive assault should be won every time, simply because of this fact. They have to attack you. That is such a disadvantage for them, because you can just sit there on full health, you can sit there for 10 minutes and you win. So if you go, if you start the game with that mentality that, oh, I'm just going to sit here and never lose health, then the enemy can't, they, they just can't do anything. They're trying to attack over here. They lose health. You're still on full health. But if you have lost health at the start of the game, they will find it easier to attack you. The defensive assault team should always look at playing as defensively as possible. That is why it's called defensive assault. They should keep their positions and they should let the enemy attack. Because it is so difficult. It is so bloody difficult to attack people in World of Tanks. Unless you have a flat out advantage and the enemy don't. On offensive assault on the majority of maps, they have to attack into the open, into your forces. Patience is such a virtue in the defensive assault game mode. You can sit behind a lunch line and you can say, I don't have to do anything. We can see it with this T95 right now. Let's look at what advantage these guys have over us right now. They are going to die because of the sheer weight of numbers and I'm not going to stop. However, look at what's going on here. At no point does this T95 feel compelled to attack at all. He does not have to poke over if he's a tank, he does not have to poke over, show his lower plate, and I guess, okay, okay, let's do this, let's do this. Let's say we've got a hold down IS-7 here. 
You are in a hold down IS-7 and you're trying to attack this T-95. Now, the T-95 is not going to do any damage to you, but a smart player on the defensive at all, if this T-95 was smart, he is just going to go, um, no, I'm sorry, I'm out, and fall back. He never has to engage you. You have to attack him, and that's why in, on maps like Kumelia, when I see my team attacking round the corner into hold down enemy tanks, it's like, why are you doing it? Why are you letting them occupy a strong hold down position? They don't have that right. You have the ability to make them push simply by waiting. They feel more and more pressure as the clock goes down. They are more and more likely to make mistakes. So on defensive assault, play passively. Play to your strengths that the game mode gives you. And that is the fact that you can sit on your ass. If the enemy have a good position, fine. They can have that good position. You're just going to fall back and make them have to come out of that good position to attack into you. You're not going to lose health when the enemy have any semblance of an advantage. And that is why defensive assault should be a lot hard, a lot, offensive assault should be a lot harder to win than it actually is. Unfortunately, people are dumb in a world of tanks. And defensive assault players will lose health early, they will play stupidly, and that's why so many offensive assault games are won fairly easily. Um, it's not because the game mode is balanced, it's not at, at a base value. It's not balanced when... Uh, it's not balanced when you try and lay siege to a castle, is it? In medieval times, when people attacked a castle, that wasn't balanced, that was unfair, because they had to attack into the enemy that were prepared for them. Assault game modes are, at a, at a basis, they are unbalanced. That is just how they are, hopefully. With my advice, you can understand a bit more about why the assault game mode is, is so... It's just, it relies so much on the map being balanced, and the offensive on Sand River is just insanely unbalanced and unfair. Now, let's talk specifics about what we're doing here. As we know, we relocated over to the other flank, which is, as we predicted, losing horribly. Our team have just no capacity to push there whatsoever. They're just going to sit there, they're going to get killed by the RT, or they would if we weren't about to take him apart limb from limb. And at this point, I have no patience for anything. I have absolutely no patience for the enemy. I have no patience for a Death Star that's sitting here trying to hold. I don't care if I'm going to take a Death Star shell because I'm with my team and someone needs to do it. And I'm not going to be wasting that ground, letting the enemy consolidate their forces and think about what they've got to do. I want to push this flank, get in here as quickly as possible. I do not care about taking damage. Aggression is the mentality. All right, now we've got to do it as quickly as possible. And this was just lovely to see the synergy of our team here. And at this point, I'm thinking about waiting back here because it's safer. But these guys have attacked with me through that line. I do not want to abandon them where they currently are. So I push over, I push up into a dangerous position. But I am helping these guys out by being here, and I'm an important part of this push. If I die, it means that these guys in front of me aren't going to take damage. You know, it's, it is entirely a team effort in this scenario, and to be honest, I would much rather have stayed back on this range line to keep myself safe, but no, I need to get in there, I need to support this push, and we need to finish off this game, and it's 8-3 on the defensive assault or offensive assault for us def defenses for them which they should have won every day of the week and you guys will like this shot that was ninja shell so should we look into why the enemy team lost this as well as not having their forces balanced they had two of their tier 10 heavy tanks in one position in in assault game modes, in defensive, 
basically, on, on Santa Claus, you want to you wanna have an even split, basically, with some forces in the middle. And the enemy just did not do that. So we pushed aggressively through one flank. Good work by our team to win. And, yeah, it was just very, very simple, to be honest. And, yes, the G-54 did just land the 140-odd ton Waffenschmigaffi 100 to death because that's how he rolls. And so what advice can I give you for assault game modes um, in terms of offensive? We've covered defensive, but how can you dig out an enemy team that is playing well on a defense? You can't. And you may look at that statement and think, well, yeah, you can. And yeah, you can, but if the enemy are playing well, you just have no chance. As, it, as I said, it is unfair. Your best chance, your best chance if you detect that there is no way, there is no hole, there is no gap, there is no weakness for you to exploit on the enemy team's defensive lineup if they are positioned perfectly, your best chance is to hope that they get overconfident. And what you should do in that situation, especially if the enemy team have arty, is not make a static engagement. Be at the back, be defensive, keep on the move, look at where your team is, see if you've got more tanks to one side, in which case gravitate towards that side because the enemy are most likely going to push out one side. Now, this is the thing. This is how you beat a team that is playing well defensive. In reality, you don't. They will beat themselves. Let's take an example on Santa Clarita here. This is a very rare scenario, but what I want you to grasp is the concept. When this happens on other maps, you need to be able to identify it and react to it quickly. So, what will generally happen on defensive assault on other maps, not so much on Santa Clarita, is that your team will try and attack, and they will slowly get massacred. Let's say about five minutes into the game, or four minutes into the game, your team are dead. They tried to offensive assault the enemy, the enemy had too good a defense, and they died here. Now, at this point, the enemy should cut their losses, and they should fall back to bolster the other flank. They should fall back to a position here, so that if you push there, they can support it, and if you push there, they've got far support anyway. However, what most defensive assault teams will do is they will push out. They will see that they killed your team there and they will push out onto this land here. And that is your single moment where you can win the game. Because at that point you have to push with all your might on the other flank, attempt to get to the enemy base, and more often than not, you will find that the enemy have a remarkably weak flank due, due to this one pushing out and you'll find that you'll be able to get into the enemy base while the enemy are pointlessly pushing into your land and wasting their time completely. So if you don't think that you can push on the enemy, if you know that you will die, your best chance, although not a good chance, is to wait for them. Look at the enemy, look at when they're playing aggressively on one flank and push. It's like you're going around opposite sides of a bowling ball. You're just rotating your team. So their team are pushing out there, you're going to push in there. It's it's not a good chance, but it's the best bet when the enemy have got a competent defensive lineup. Because if you have to attack into them, they have an advantage. It is very, very difficult to win the offensive game mode if the defensive players are smart. Like I say, most of the time, they're not going to be smart. And you'll be able to win, but hopefully, this game has given you a bit of an idea, a bit of a more effective idea of how the assault game mode works, and hopefully, you'll be able to use the thought processes here to help you win some more assault uh, offensive assault and defensive assault game modes and do let me know if you found it helpful uh, leave a like if you did because uh, I'm happy today um and uh, gentlemen uh, farewell.
I'm I'm killing Poodle. What the hell? Ah, a centurion. Oh. Ah, yeah. Yeah. There you go, buddy. Have a batch. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Don't mind me. <laughs> oh no, I like, killed him. Ah, oh, damn well. <laughs> Let me apologize while I endure my constant death. I don't-